Greetings and welcome back to World Regional Geography 101. And uh, as I had uh, indicated on the uh, getting to know the uh, course you know, via the syllabus, um, I am very excited about teaching this course. And I um, often chide colleagues uh, in, the, uh, in the social sciences uh, regarding the uh, importance uh, of geography um, up against the other, uh, all the other disciplines in it. Uh, with the themes of geography, you have uh, location and place, um, man's relationship with the, uh, the environment, uh, distance and, and region. And if one has a handle on um, any of these, certainly all of them, it's easier to uh, interpret uh, other disciplines like psychology, sociology, economics, history, etc. So in that vein, I always tease my colleagues and tell them that uh, you know, in light of that uh, influence that geography has, it is indeed king uh, in, the, uh, in the social sciences. And in uh, this particular uh, tributary of geography, we are going to be examining the various regions of the globe. And we're going to also keep up to date with various current events uh, via some in the news assignments, uh, which we did, I'll discuss a little bit more at the end of this lecture. And, um, you know, drawn up with each uh, chapter or a unit. Now, I've supplied you with a lecture model. I spoke on that uh, as well in the um, previous uh, getting to know the uh, syllabus uh, uh, video. I provide you with a lecture model. And uh, each week, generally on Mondays, generally on Mondays, I can't think of any time where I may have to deviate from that, but generally on Mondays, I will administer the lectures. Uh, they'll be available at 12 midnight on that said day, and uh, you can access them uh, throughout uh, the week up until Sunday night. And then uh, at those junctures, there's certain junctures here on the lecture models, um, we have some white space on that, as you, you'll see. Uh, we'll be able to fill in notes, and then I have some fill in the blanks because of time. Right, so and then uh, you know at various junctures you can stop the uh, stop the video and uh, record uh, the appropriate information. Now, once you're finished with the um, with the lecture model, I will have some um, uh, comprehension assignments uh, and uh, some videos that uh, you can check out as well. More on that too uh, at the end of the lecture. Um, so, um, again, there'll be several types, the types of comprehension assignments that you can choose from, uh, you know, which, you know, depending on your learning style, I try to craft them uh, in a way that um, there's several, uh, uh, several offerings there for different types of uh, learners. Now, let's get into uh, the um, subject matter. And... Um, let me just ask you to um, you know, take no more than a minute to do this. Uh, just jot down an explanation on a scrap piece of paper or something about what you think the uh, discipline of geography is. And um, shortly, we will talk about that, see how accurate uh, you know, your prediction was. Okay, unless uh, you have take an intro to geography, uh, you know that it is more than uh, just a, a study of mountains and maps. Uh, it, it does shape humans, but uh, humans too uh, shape, shape the geography around them as well. And so much of it comes down really to uh, how folks uh, order the world and, uh, and, and how they perceive it, uh, which in more than a few cases, uh, has been shaped by uh, geography since the beginning of time. I mean, religion, uh, uh, for example, has been affected by geography, which therefore 
uh, will influence a region's uh, politics and institutions. So, well, if you take a look at your, your lecture model, you will see some white space at the very top. So at that place, I will give you a, a kind of a, a semi-textbook semi, uh, um, textbook definition of the discipline. And uh, for you visual types, for you visual types, you will benefit from your textbook uh, visual. So you will want to uh, have those out as well as I reference uh, those pictures and visuals from, uh, from time to time. Let's um, take a look here and get up the lecture model on the screen here. And um, I wanna talk about where we wanna go with this chapter and some what I call heads up terms, harder, harder to understand terms or unfamiliar terms so chapter one, globalization and world regions. The objectives here, we want to uh, relate the reality of spatial patterns in the physical and human world. We wanna summarize how spatial patterns are distributed and how they relate and change. Uh, we wanna explain how regional geography provides a spatial view to where folks live and where they make meaning to life, meaning of life, and then we'll look at the different periods of globalization. Uh, we'll differentiate how globalization has changed uh, over time. Major heads up terms here. We're gonna uh, differentiate between human and uh, physical geography. Uh, human geography is those human activities, right? And physical geography is uh, how, you know, natural environment uh, unfolds. Uh, spatial view, this is where people live. This is where people live and uh, the, uh, the places that they occupy. Uh, region, right? region, this is the area, the area with characteristics uh, that distinguish it. Regional geography, right? Regional geography, that will evaluate uh, those differences. So we evaluate those differences. Nodes, interesting concept. Places where uh, flows uh, between places within the regions begin, uh, intersect, uh, or, or end. Globalization, probably a term that um, was only talked about maybe in uh, think tanks up uh, until the early 90s, uh, once the um, Soviet Union, Soviet Union dissolved at the end of 1991. And uh, there we're talking about just the intertwining of, uh, of world cultures. Feudalism, feudalism, uh, feudalism is, uh, you know, you have your, your, your peasants uh, and warlords, um, peasants work the land uh, for the warlord in return for protection. Uh, and we're talking about medieval Europe. And we'll look at that when we look at the, uh, when we analyze the, uh, you know, the various phases of globalization. Uh, global choke points, global choke points. Um, Suez Canal was in the news, right? Uh, in the, back in the spring, a uh, big cargo ship got stuck in the Suez Canal, right? And uh, it had no small global effects, right? On world trade and economies. Uh, so Suez Canal, uh, Strait of Hormuz, the Panama Canal, some of the more well-known uh, global choke points. Um, Suez Canal, of course, links the Mediterranean and the Red Seas. And then localization, right? Just the opposite of, of globalization. Localization, um, you know, focused on local identities. Local identities, uh, local customs um, tend to be more nationalistic. Let's take a look at this here. What is geography? And we'll see how you can see how um, close your prediction, your analysis, uh, definition was, uh, geography is a discipline that studies spatial patterns. 
in the human and physical world, how and, and where uh, human and the natural features of the earth uh, are distributed, uh, how they relate to each other and how they change. Uh, geographers examine the distribution of um, such things as vegetation and language. Now, geography, uh, uh, geographic studies, geographic studies are important as um, there is a tremendous amount of diversity, um, connectivity, and, and uh, change among humans and, uh, and the physical features. The world we live in, right? The world we live in is, uh, it's, it's very dynamic uh, with constantly changing human uh, environmental, political, economic, and social interactions. World geography then provides a framework to enable uh, us to make better sense of these uh, complexities uh, of our world. So the discipline of geography is one that provides a, a spatial view of the world, whereby geographers study these uh, spatial patterns and uh, they attempt to explain them. Uh, geography sometimes is divided into physical and, um, and geography, which again, that, that's examining uh, the earth's natural environment. And then they ha you have human geography, uh, which is the study of distributions of people and their, and their activities. So world regional geography incorporates elements of both types uh, of analysis. Take a look at geographic study matter, breaking this down a little bit further. And again, the fills and the, uh, you know, the notes that you're taking, these will be the things that you will be quizzed on. These will be things you're gonna need to add into your discussion questions, right? Ge geographic study matter. Geographers use um, several approaches. Uh, they establish scientific laws to uh, explain observations. Um, they investigate meanings that uh, folks give places, linking significance uh, of individual choice to the role of institutions. We're talking about uh, we're talking about institutions, the role of government, right? How how our government will uh, function. Uh, views on you know the institution of marriage. Now, the types of subject matter, physical and human geography, physical geography, those natural environmental processes. Uh, and this deals with climate, uh, plant life, soils, mountains and rivers. The study of human environment. That looks at relationships at uh, both the impact of uh, the environment on human activities and, and vice versa. Geography as the study of places and flows among them. Uh, geography will uh, therefore provide a place or space related spatial view. Okay. Places on the earth's surface as the uh, environment or spaces where, where uh, folks live and uh, where they make meaning and sense uh, out of life. Now on page six, I believe it is, figure one, five, page six. So I wanna talk about latitude and longitude a little bit here. Uh, probably a, a little bit of a recap from uh, your high school days, maybe even middle school. Now, absolute location uh, this is dealing with precise places uh, on the Earth's surface. Uh, latitude, we're dealing with how far north uh, of the equator it places, and this is uh, measured in degrees. You can see your visual there. You've got your prime meridian, right? Zero degree longitude stretches from the north to south pole through Greenwich, England. Parallel of latitude, a circle 
that joins places of the same latitude at the Earth's surface. Uh, the ground distance between those is about 69 miles. Uh, longitude measures east and west. Then you have your distance and direction. You have your relative location. Relative location, uh, direction and distance uh, help define uh, one place with reference with reference to another. Then you have friction of distance. Friction of distance, the increasing cost of distance between places. Then your scale of size. Scale of size, uh, scale, uh, we're talking about um, We're talking about uh, the kind of the uh, arithmetic uh, relationship between actual distance on the ground and uh, map representation. And your map scales, your map scales vary with size to be mapped. And of course, with the maps, with the maps purpose. Then you have your small scale maps and um, your large scale maps. So your, your large scale maps uh, specialize in smaller areas. And figure one six on page seven, now you could see um, some illustrations of this. So a region is uh, a region is an area with characteristics that uh, distinguish it from other regions. Jumping ahead there, I'm sorry. The uh, characteristics may be uh, may be physical. Uh, maybe human or, or again, a combination, combination of both. And regions exist at, uh, at multiple scales, some as large as a uh, entire portion of the globe, and some as small as a, a portion of a city. Uh, regions are also dynamic. They're dynamic and they're, um, when I talk about being dynamic, they change, right? Um, the boundaries of a region uh, can change as movements of people, um, goods, and uh, and information uh, redefine the organization of uh, human activities and institutions. Take a look at geography of regions and break this down. Get some fills here, so you're going to need to know this. Geography of regions. Uh, regional geography evaluates differences and and uh, similarities within and between defined areas or regions of the Earth's surface. Now, those dynamic concepts of regions, those dynamic concepts of regions, regions are defined, and this looks like a good quiz question, regions are defined and created by geographers for specific purposes. You'll have about seven or eight quiz questions somewhere therein. And uh, this is one I, I think is on there. Uh, no region endures forever. No region endures forever because the world is changing, right? And so are the, um, so are the perceptions of people. So are the perceptions of people. There are three types of regions. You have the perceptual region. And I'm not going to... Um, given too much detail in that here, you have perceptual regions that people have a perception from the outside on a region and people inside a region have a perception, right? Texans, right? They're very proud that they do everything bigger, right? Um, here in South uh, Western Pennsylvania, outsiders have a perception of West Virginia, right? Unfortunately, a lot of bad jokes, right? Emerge, uh, from uh, north of the border over here in the, in, uh, from Pennsylvania. Then you have functional regions. Functional regions um, are generally thus because of some kind of economic activity, some kind of economic activity or um, um, some kind of uh, you know, social, um, some kind of social phenomenon that's going on, uh, but it's subject to change. Um, just north of me, um, I'm down in Somerset County, and north of me is the uh, town of Johnstown, and um, I'm told at one time there was about 130,000 people. 
Uh, it's definitely not that now. Uh, maybe less than 30,000, right? The steel mills uh, um, took a big hit in the late 70s, early 80s, and it's no longer the uh, functional region that it um, once, once was. Then you have formal regions. Formal regions are not going to change. They're deemed as such because of uh, maybe climate patterns, soil patterns, uh, maybe language pattern, maybe some kind of custom or law. It's probably not going to change formal regions. Now the relationships, getting back to the fills here, getting the relationships between human and natural environment features are, as they say here, basic. They are basic to the understanding of regional geography. And uh, recently, uh, studies have um, assessed the impacts of human activities, right, on the physical environment. So therefore, regions are dynamic. They're dynamic because of the internal and external uh, flow patterns of people, uh, goods, and ideas. Now, nodes, Nodes are places where flows begin, uh, where they intersect or end. Now, nodes um, may define a regional boundary. Uh, it could go from a store, you know, a restaurant to a capital city uh, or an urban center. Um, again, I'm going to use um, Johnstown as an example now for those of us in Somerset because Johnstown is kind of dying uh, we go over to uh, Westmoreland West Westmoreland Mall and Westmoreland County probably uh, for a lot of our um, entertainment and shopping but there was a time uh, the mall up at uh, up in Cambria County the Galleria Mall uh, attracted a lot of a lot of people and one of the, one of the, the uh, entities there was a, uh, a restaurant an Italian, um, Italian restaurant that served as a node to bring a lot of the town uh, out to the mall. And um, therefore the mall became a, a kind of a jumping place for a couple of decades and it in, in no small part to, uh, can't remember the uh, name of the, uh, name of the um, restaurant, still there, still there. I don't know, it was as influential as it once was because the, the malls are just uh, half of what it was, I guess, big reason why. Um, people make and remake regions. People make and remake regions. Uh, people create regions. People create regions. People living in a region determine its characteristics. Uh, human interactions at crucial places of history set a region apart from other regions. Uh, folks inside or outside of a region are frequently aided by the press, uh, the media, or governmental propaganda, which gin up their own perspectives of a region's identity. Uh, residents uh, may then therefore see their relations with others as either um, hostile or, or friendly. Uh, human actions are ultimately most important in defining regions because folks live differently in similar natural environments. People remake regions. Boundaries between regions can change over time. Uh, in um, your um, your authors, uh, once we get to it, uh, we look when we get to Europe in chapter uh, chapter. I think it's chapter three. I think it's chapter three. There's a map there of the European boundaries that the Europeans carved up in Africa in the 1880s, which have, uh, and we'll dwell on that when we get there, have uh, served to do some bad things even after the Europeans left. Regions interact with other regions. Uh, no region is secluded. No region is secluded. Uh, folks in the coastal towns of China, uh, make goods that are sold in the U.S., right? Uh, some areas affect surrounding regions through their role in funneling trade, through narrow ocean route thoroughfares, 
between and through ways. Uh, for example, wealthy countries will defend passage of ships through global choke points like the Northwest Passage up by Alaska and, and Canada. Suez Canal, which we talked about earlier, the Strait of Hormuz and the Panama Canal. Uh, on page 330 and 331, uh, in a subsequent chapter, there's a visual of um, some of these for you visual types. You want to take a look at that. And then region is, uh, regions defined are used by those, defined by those in power. Regions are largely influenced by powerful governments, uh, non-governmental institutions, and uh, multinational corporations. So again, you know, did your definition uh, of geography, was it different than what was given here? Um, what are the two types of subject matter and regional geography? Uh, how are regions defined and how are they created? Can regions change? Are they generally independent from one another? I want to finish up here by looking at globalization and I want to set this up by, um, well, just saying these things here that uh, two geographic trends of globalization and localization uh, help geographers uh, understand uh, the correct structure of, of world regions, uh, especially the interaction within and among regions since the onset of the, uh, of the 21st century. Uh, globalization is the uh, increasing connectivity among the world's pe uh, people and places, uh, which uh, oftentimes results in increasing uh, similarities among regions. While uh, frequently examined within uh, that context, within that context of economic exchanges, globalization uh, exists in, in many forms, including informational, uh, social, cultural, political, and environmental interconnection, okay? Uh, localization uh, refers to local identities that uh, exist among places, countries, and regions. Uh, identities are often defined by uh, political nationalism, local customs and, and practices, uh, religious differences, and resistance uh, to globalizing forces. Uh, probably a, uh, probably not so, so small a piece of pie. If you cut up a pie in different regions why the war on terror happened, uh, you had various parts of the world that were not uh, all that excited about um, having their cultures affected by, you know, Western cultures. And as we've talked about, you know, regions have been created and, and recreated. Right. They've been created and recreated uh, throughout the history of human occupation of the earth. And they've evolved as uh, agricultural practices emerged, uh, trading networks uh, became established, and uh, political institutions have come and went, right? And so given the, the global scale, given the global scale of interaction among people and the, the forces, of localization, uh, one should uh, expect that dynamic nature uh, of world regional geography uh, to continue. So let's take a look at the various phases of globalization. You had prehistory, right? Prehistory. Prehistory around uh, 5000 BC. Uh, most humans lived in small family-based groups, hunting and gathering. You had settled farming, right? The first settled farming began in few areas of Southeastern Asia, followed by areas of China and other Asian areas and the Americas. Now, we're not at that juncture. Um, that would be Central America on down through Argentina, right? So, uh, right through South America, uh, North America, the Johnny-come-latelys, 
on the scene. Uh, some early staple crops, and we talk about staple crops, we're talking about basic food, was located uh, wheat and barley in Southwest Asia, rice and millet, and millet is a um, uh, like a cereal grain uh, that was in China, and you have corn, uh, squash, beans, potatoes, tomatoes, and and paper in the in, in the Americas. Then you had city states, city states, and and empires. Early civilizations were uh, marked by uh, irrigation farming. Uh, much wealth was expressed in major buildings. Uh, you had the technological um, development of uh, writing. Early civilizations saw large surpluses of um, farm products, right, from their societies. So they therefore, in turn, remade regions in, into something new and distinctive. Uh, you had productive irrigation farming. Productive irrigation farming uh, was found along the uh, lower Tigris and Euphrates rivers. Uh, the probably the earliest known civilization, Mesopotamia, uh, the Huanghe River in China, and along the coast of Peru. Figure one eleven in your textbook, page seventeen provides a nice visual of some of this. Uh, as well. Enter trading empires and your classical civilizations. By AD 200, uh, trade routes for high value goods extended between Rome and China along the Silk Road. And you can see on page 17, uh, there's a little uh, illustration of the Silk Road. You can see uh, in the Americas, again, Central America and down in South America, the Mayas. The Maya Indians developed their own writing system. Uh, they built cities uh, around huge public buildings by AD 250. Then you had disruptions, migrations, and feudalism. Feudalism, the first blank there, this is equals people receive military protection in exchange for working a proportion of their time for a local warlord. The warlord gave allegiance to a higher order of knights, uh, kings, and emperors. Um, the, the downsides to that were that trade got hurt. Everything was, you know, um, regionalized, right? Regionalized. Everything was too local. Everything was too local and uh, that there were no stable, no stable boundaries. The modern globalizing world, right? Well, when did all that start? Uh, new systems of trade and wealth expansion uh, developed in Western Europe by uh, 1450. Uh, new maritime technology, um, zeal for merchants to make profits and a missionary zeal to um, spread Christianity. Industrialization and colonization. And, uh, page 19, figure 113. Give you an illustration of this uh, particular time period. After gaining independence in uh, 1950, right? So we're fast forwarding um, quite a, a, a good distance here. After gaining independence in 1950, the uh, colonies, a lot of these colonies were still economically dependent on their colonizers, on their colonizers. Uh, British merchants, British merchants invested their new wealth from uh, overseas ventures and the factory based uh, concentrations of manufacturing. Uh, advantages were gained through trade, military, and again, uh, uh, colonialism. After World War II and the Cold War. After World War II, after World War II, globalization was polarized between the Cold War superpowers. Roughly 
1950, um, probably right up through 1991. Uh, I should probably revise that, be really specific. Soviet Union actually dissolved last week of December 1991. Uh, those of us alive and old enough to know about all about the Cold War will never forget it. We didn't think it would ever happen. Uh, international institutions then came into being as a, um, uh, as a result of um, the dissolution of the Soviet Union. So, you know, there, you know, before the time of written records, how are folks living? Uh, by AD 200, what developed to start interconnecting the world or what began the development of globalization and, and what is globalization? If you have your um, graphic organizer, have your graphic organizer, get that out, we'll just recap and we'll talk about what's up ahead and we'll call it a day here as far as I am concerned. Um, globalization in world regions, we looked at geography, study spatial patterns in the human and physical world. It studies how and when humans and natural features of the earth are distributed and how they relate and change. And again, um, until you get the rhythm of how I do things, um, the graphic organizer, it's a nice visual recap. It is on our uh, course page, um, which was mentioned uh, in um, our getting to know the syllabus uh, segment. Study matter of globalization in world regions. You have the you know, physical geography, human geography, um, scientific laws, the study of places and institutions. Uh, globalization of world regions, um, they, um, the geography of regions. Regions are uh, remade, uh, boundaries change. They are made by the media and government, by people. Uh, they're dynamic, right? They can change. Uh, they get created and defined by geographers. They are used by those in power, governments, NGOs, or na um, um, national government organizations and then multinational corporations. And they interact with other regions. Be hard pressed to find a region that doesn't do that via trade, global choke points. And then finally, the timeline of globalization, prehistory, hunting, gathering, 5,000 BC, settled farming, China, Asia, and the Americas, um, city states and empires, uh, irrigation, farming, building construction, writing emerges. Trading empires, classical civilization, right? AD 200, um, Silk Road, major conduit for, for trade. You saw that in your textbook, where it was. Um, goes from the Orient over into, uh, you know, maybe the old Ottoman Empire the Ro the, and the Roman Empire. Uh, feudal period, society becomes localized. Trade was interrupted no stable boundaries. Uh, in, your, in your modern world, around 1450, uh, maritime explorations, profit, plague, spread of Christianity. Then you have industrialization and colonization. And then the Cold War, we're getting into the 20th century, right? 1950 to 1991. Uh, polarization, colonies gain independence in the uh, 1950s. And then 1992, the talk of globalization, right? And we are uh, moving at a very, very uh, rapid pace. Take a look at um, what's up ahead here. Now, I have, uh, as I, I indicated again, on the get to know the syllabus and the course segment, Practice assignments. Uh, I would advise doing at least one of these. I have several. I'm going to have several each week. They're geared toward different learning styles, but it gives you a chance to practice uh, with the material. The material I just talked about, because I want to see that material uh, mentioned uh, in your discussion questions. All right, the discussion questions are going to be ten points, but I don't see stuff mentioned from this and. Uh, you know, from the, uh, from the lecture model and, um, you know, you're not going to get the 10 points. 
Uh, same thing with a couple of other things I'm going to mention here very shortly. So you got practice assignments, and it helps you also to internalize the information to learn it. You want to learn it, but it helps you with the quizzes too, right? Uh, if you're not scoring well on the quizzes, not a good thing. Videos. I'm going to have short video clips, one to three, maybe each week. This week we have a, a four minute, a little over four minutes. For you, again, for you audio visual type people, you can recap you know, some of what I talked about. Not all, certainly not all of it. Uh, what is globalization? And then you're reading. You're reading page eight of chapter one, uh, Geography at Work, uh, Map Makers, and um, and uh, you know, GIS um, analysts, analysis, and uh, GIS is your you know global basically your global uh, information system. It's a kind of a form of spatial analysis that um, integrates uh, computer hardware and uh, mapping software and a lot of specialized stuff, right? Specialized tools. Uh, such as models and, and algorithm, uh, algorithms and so forth. So you'll see it on page eight, uh, not a long reading, but again, uh, just, you know, more fodder uh, for uh, your, your uh, all important understanding of the material and uh, to help you with you know, your discussion questions, discussion posts and uh, the, the, the quiz. Thursday, your friend, and you don't owe those to me, right? You don't, you do not owe those to me. Uh, on Thursday night, um, I am going to set time aside uh, for you folks to uh, contact me via uh, Zoom or email, however you want to do it, phone calls, and uh, to uh, kind of debrief and see how well you're learning things, right? How well you, you know, if you wanted to check up on your practice assignments. Uh, see how, you know, if you're getting things right, um, you know, it'd be a time uh, we, that we could do that. But Thursday, by Thursday night, 11.59, you will have your first assignment that you're going to owe me uh, for a grade, and that's in the news. And in the news, you'll have a half dozen or so current events, um, issues dealing with the units we're looking at. And um, so you could choose, you know, any one of those six and just follow the directions and write on that and get that to me. So that'll be due midnight uh, Thursday in the news. Friday, by midnight, your initial discussion post uh, will, be, uh, will be due. Uh, you cannot respond to anyone else's posts uh, until you do that. Sunday night, 11.59, your two response posts uh, will be due make sure you look very carefully at the rubric for the discussion posts, okay? And how to do those. And then Monday, midnight, Sunday night, 12.01, I guess, uh, Monday, I will have your quiz uh, posted and uh, you will have um, uh, about, you'll have some time to do that. And get that to me by, um, 11.59 Monday night, uh, your quizzes. Um, I'm trying to think right now if I've timed them or not. And then we will start the cycle over again. Chapter two, um, we will begin that concepts in world regional geography. And that will be accompanied by a lecture and uh, a lecture model. Okay, so there you have it. Um, any questions, comments, uh, you, know, you can email me. I'm kind of looking at my emails all the time. And uh, otherwise, you guys have a fantastic week and uh, do well. Bye-bye.